Hi, my name is Doug Rosenberg. I am the uh, founder and CEO of a company called Parallel Agile Inc. And I'm going to talk to you today about uh, generating SysML version 2 models using AI. So I'm just going to jump right in and get started. And what you're looking at is a brand new chat using chat GPT-5. So nothing special, nothing uh, other than what's out of the box, GPT-5. I'm going to start this session by adding in something that we call a style guide. And this is some code samples um, that AI uses to generate valid SysML v2. So um, I'm going to say give a short summary of this document. Omit details. And so ChatGPT is basically going to tell us what's in it. And it says um, it's got some Cameo compliant code samples. It's got some lunar module stuff. It's got uh, some requirements, use cases, activity diagrams, IBDs. And um, this is basically all we need. We don't need any extra frameworks or plugins or anything like that. Cameo or uh, ChatGPT in general, AI just needs some clean code samples to work from. So we're gonna use a uh, example of the Hubble Space Telescope today. So I'm going to say list the subsystems of the Hubble Space Telescope. And I like to do things first in English before I start messing around with generating SysML code. Um, I want to know if I like what uh, what AI knows about this system. So I've it's identified nine subsystems here. And I'm going to then ask it um, generate this in SysML version 2. And what you're going to see is it's going to make me a diagram with the parts. And hopefully it's going to um, include the um, actions that each of these parts perform. But here are my part definitions. And it was a little brief. It didn't uh, quite list this. So I'm gonna tell it to add actions. Add actions for each subsystem, just make our diagram a little bit more interesting. And this is a pretty typical pattern is you refine what you're doing in the AI. And then when you see it's giving you what you want, it uh, then you just copy it into Cameo, which is what I'm going to do next. And so now you can see it's giving me all these actions on a per subsystem basis. And this will generate a much more interesting diagram here. So given that, I'm just gonna copy this code and I'm gonna switch over to Cameo. And what I have is a blank SysML version two project, which I've named Hubble. So I'm going to create a namespace here open the text editor in side this new namespace. And I don't have to name it because it's going to get its name from the uh, code that I import. Now I just do a paste into, um, you know, from uh, AI directly into Cameo. Now, if there's any errors, I'm going to get red ink over here on my diagram. But you can see this generated correctly the first time. And when that happens, this little floppy disk icon lights up. 
And this enables me to synchronize the model from my textual notation. And now you can see all of these model elements have been created and also a blank uh, diagram has been created. So I'm gonna open this blank diagram and I'm gonna drag in here my top level part definition, which is for the whole telescope. And then I'm going to use a display option called tree view style display parts. And now I get uh, all my subsystems showing up here. Uh, if I have a style sheet installed, I can skip this step. But if I go to the symbol properties, I can go over here to actions tell it to show the compartment. And then because of the way SysML version two works, I have to check show inherited. And now you can see for each subsystem, I've got all of the uh, actions that that subsystem performs. And I can lay this out SysML version two style. And not sure I like that layout very much, but um, Anyway, you can see that I've got um, uh, basically a set of subsystems here and, um, and the actions that each subsystem performs. So uh, I consider this to be um, pretty good and a pretty nice breakthrough on uh, uh, just generating the start of your model using AI. But now I'm going to show you something that I think is even more exciting. So I'm going to go back to chat GPT over here. And I'm going to upload a second template, which is something that we call a logical architecture template. And um, what's in this logical architecture template is basically a, um, an example that is designed to work for one subsystem at a time, and it's going to show me the requirements, the parts, a state machine, and an IBD all in one prompt. And so let's try that now. Um, and let's say um, generate the logical architecture for the power subsystem. And I, while it's generating, I'll tell you why I picked this example. Um, but first, let, we'll kind of watch it start. And um, so this is GPT-5, and it likes to think. Uh, and so it's now generating the requirements, a part decomposition, state machine, and an IBD, each in its own package. And so here's our requirements. Here's our parts. Um, here's a state machine. Uh, and uh, the, the reason I picked this example is that way back around 1990, I spent a week in uh, Greenbelt, Maryland at NASA Goddard working with the team that was rehosting some software for the uh, Hubble before they flew the repair mission. And, and the reason they were rehosting this software was that um, the original Hubble that they flew had a bunch of um, processors in it that were not radiation hard. And um, these processors did things like point to solar panels at the sun. And so they had to replace these um, these. CPUs with uh, which what at the time was uh, state of the art, which was radiation hard 386 chips. Um, so yes, I'm old. Um, so now let's just see what came in uh, for the power subsystem. And again, I'm just going to paste my code in. And if we're lucky, it goes through um, the first time with uh, no errors. Uh, and so now we can create the model elements for this. 
and then go look at them all. Uh, so we're going to start with the requirements. And so here are some requirements for the power subsystem. And uh, while I'm doing this, I would like to thank the folks at uh, Dassault Systems. In particular, a really helpful gentleman named Osvaldis who helped me fight through getting all these code samples working the first time. Uh, and I want to thank them for letting us uh, use this pre-release version of Cameo. So um, here's the power requirements, and it has to do um, fault isolation. It has to track the sun. It has to charge batteries, et cetera. So, you know, one thing that you have to realize with what comes out of AI is it's AI's guess, okay? And you can't put too much stock in uh, what AI guesses being the um, being the final answer, but it can certainly help you get started, and uh, it can certainly give you a big leg up. So this is going to be now the parts of the uh, power subsystem, and I didn't specifically ask it for the attributes and the actions but if it followed my template it uh, should have uh, put them in there so there's the actions and I can go look at the attributes you have to do this show inherited thing because of the way sysml version 2 works where in SysML version two, a part inherits its uh, features from its definition, which is a very different um, uh, way of thinking. Uh, let me try the SysML version two style layout, see if it, well, okay. Um, Anyway, uh, I'm not going to worry about the layout options, but you can see here that the um, there's a power control unit, there's a battery assembly, there's a solar array wing, um, et cetera, right? So um, it's brought in our uh, parts reasonably successfully. And now let's go do the state machine. So again, I drag the top level element on here. And in this case, I don't display it tree style, but I display it nested view style. And I want to display all the features recursively because if it gave me state transitions and things like that, I want to see them. And so here is our state machine for the power subsystem. And you can see it gave us parallel substates where it's charging and it's pointing, um, it's acquiring the sun and tracking and slewing. And, uh, you know, as a, as a first guess starting place, it looks pretty reasonable. And then here's the uh, perhaps more challenging one, um, which is now show me an IBD for the power subsystem. And so again, with this, I'm going to use the display mode and display in the nested view style all the features recursively. That should get me the ports. And lo and behold, um, so I've got a battery interface. That's the solar array wing interface. And this kind of basically tells me how everything is wired up. Okay. So um, to kind of sum up, we took one subsystem, the power subsystem, and we got requirements, structure, state machine behavior, and connectivity uh, on the, um, on the, you know, within the power subsystem. So, um, that's about as much of a demo as I want to give you in this first video. 
Uh, I think you may agree with me that we probably did several weeks worth of work here with one prompt in AI. So um, given that, um, uh, I want to um, mention a couple of things to you. In addition to the AI-assisted MBSE book, um, Brian and I are just finishing up a second book called Pain-Free MBSE. And that book should be out uh, fairly soon. It's in the middle of being formatted for uh, LeanPub. And also we are offering training uh, both independently through Parallel Agile. And you can go to the Caltech CTME, that's Center for Technology and Management Education, website and you can inquire about open enrollment training and so this covers really everything it's a full-blown sysml course it also covers a lot of stuff on hardware software co-design um and uh you'll find my bio up there so uh that is about what i wanted to um uh, to put in this video, and thank you for your attention.